Welcome to this Blender 3D modeling tutorial uh, where I'm going to show you how I made this here M1A1 Abrams tank and uh, I'm going to turn on my overlays here I'm going to show you the details in this model as you can see I went all the way with the details here I made the tracks, the suspension, the turret every little piece I, I tried to make it as detailed as I possibly could and uh, today I'm going to walk you through how I did that so I split the tank into three parts which are the body here the tracks below uh, and the turret and uh, I'm going to show you step by step pretty much exactly how I made everything here and uh, this is not a, really a beginner tutorial so I won't be explaining uh, all the different tools in detail because uh, it would just take way too much time but of course if there's anything you want me to explain separately please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a separate video and explain some of the tools that I'm using here now the first thing you want to make sure of when you're starting a tank modeling project is that you have a lot of good references and as you can see on the left side here, I have a very big picture with a whole bunch of different photos from all angles of the tank. And uh, I organized by the body, by the turret, by the tracks. And I can just basically uh, scroll through this picture a little bit when I want to look at a different part of the tank. And uh, I think uh, I was able to find some pretty good references. Now, that's only because this tank is a very popular tank and uh, there's a lot of uh, pictures and videos about it on the internet but if it's a less popular tank like maybe something from World War II then it might be a little bit more tricky to find a good blueprint or good reference photos uh, in such detail now when it comes to blueprints that's another sort of tricky part uh, for me luckily in this project again it was pretty easy to just look up uh, a blueprint for the tank and just uh, and just download that it was very high resolution and pretty detailed but sometimes again that's not very easy to find at all and uh, you just have to work with a lower quality blueprint. Now, uh, it's not easy, but it's not really such a big deal because uh, usually you can just sort of uh, use your imagination and sort of uh, make up some details which you maybe can't see in the blueprint. And uh, it's, it's mostly just to sort of generally give you the measurements of the tank and to give you an idea of what the proportions are. You don't have to be perfectly exact there. So I'm just gonna speed this part a little bit. Keep in mind that when you add a reference image, uh, it will align it with your view so if you want to add a blueprint for the top of your tank make sure that you're in top view and then the next part I did here is I added a cube and I collapsed all the vertices to the center point and then I just used that center point to sort of trace out uh, the outline of the body of the tank and uh, I did that I first have to sort of uh, fix up my blueprints here just so they're all standing on top of the axis here and then I take my vertex to the front now you can see that I stumbled across a little bit of a problem here and the problem is that when I go to top view and side view the vertex doesn't perfectly align with the blueprint. Now maybe this is just a scaling issue but it happens many times that uh, when you have a blueprint it's not identical from all sides like it's, it's almost like the dimensions of the vehicle aren't exactly the same and that can be a bit of a pain to deal with sometimes but uh, it doesn't really matter too much because as long as you get, uh, as long as you get the dimensions roughly and as long as your proportions are somewhat correct, then uh, it should be okay because it doesn't really matter too much as long as as long as the tank looks pretty normal, right? And then as you can see, I just extruded this vertex here and uh, I lined it up with the outline and I made sure it's as exact as possible just so I get all the angles right. And this is just for the main body of the tank. And then obviously the next step is to just extrude uh, this sort of uh, top part of the tank and just make it so that it goes down to the bottom of the tank which also uh, conveniently enough lines up with the middle of the wheels here so I just made sure that's flat and then I lined it up with the middle of the wheels and also I took my time to correct the angles and make sure that the bottom of my tank looks the way it should because there's some of these panels at the bottom which are under some angles and and uh, it can't really be perfectly flat so I wanted to be as accurate as I could with that but again I can't be 100% accurate because well I don't I don't know the exact measurements so I just tried to be as close as I can without without worrying about it too much. I also made sure that I line up this vertex here with the front wheel because uh, it's important because later on you're gonna have your wheel lined up with exactly the, that sort of corner at the bottom there. So uh, I thought that was pretty important here, and also with the back the same story just sort of to make it as close as possible just so it looks pretty much realistic but it doesn't matter too much. And then I just extrude the body of the tank and uh, I make sure that I have it on the right width on the x-axis and then I just went ahead and I slapped on a mirrored modifier 
because in this case the body of the tank without the details is pretty much symmetrical so you can just go ahead and add a mirror it's going to save you a lot of work so you don't have to do it you don't have to do everything twice on each side of the tank now at this point I decided that I should make these headlights at the front of the tank here and uh, I wanted to avoid using booleans for this case because I just felt like it's going to work out a little bit better if I use loop cuts and then just manually hand model this little dent here where the headlight is resting. Uh, later on I changed my mind, I decided to, to use a boolean instead, but for now I just made some loop cuts and uh, I just sort of extruded uh, a little dent here and I filled it in. Now when I do this kind of stuff I like to use my 3D cursor a lot, which you're going to notice uh, a lot in this 3D modeling tutorial. It just I place my 3D cursor somewhere and then I use it as a sort of center point or pivot point and I use it to align another vertex with the 3D cursor. And uh, I think it's a very helpful tool. Uh, I think without doing this it's pretty much impossible to get uh, to a very high level of modeling. At least for me that was the case. I don't think I'd be able to do any of this without using my 3D cursor uh, as a tool all the time. As you can see here I'm, I'm using the 3D cursor and then I'm aligning this vertex in the back over there with the 3D cursor on the Y and the Z axis, but not the X axis. Uh, you can see that right now. And uh, th this helps a lot just to be perfectly accurate with uh, some of my modeling work. And then I just filled in the rest of the gaps here just so I have a sort of a, a dent which is proportional to the blueprint. But again, I decided to use a boolean afterwards because I figured that it's much better if I want to add some bevels to the sides and the bevels are also pretty important because uh, they, they make the model look a lot more realistic and the edges uh, shouldn't be too sharp so bevels help with that a lot. Now the next thing I decided to do was these sort of uh, armor panels on the sides of the tank and you can see that in the top view of this picture here and uh, I basically just took this point here and uh, the idea is it has to line up with this line which you can see is sort of angled uh, to the right side of the tank and then uh, you want to extrude it and make sure that it lines up uh, with the blueprint now the problem is if you just do that from top view, it doesn't line up with the front of the tank here. So you can't really do that. You want to have it going downwards, you want to have it sloping towards the front of the tank under the same angle uh, as the front panel of the tank. And uh, the only way to really do this is to use a 3D cursor as a reference. So what I did is I extruded my vertex to the side on the x-axis so it has the right width. And then I placed my 3D cursor as you can see there on any random point uh, on the edge of the slope here. In this case, it's, it's the vertex at the end here. And then I just scale it down uh, on the Y and the Z axis. Like you can do that by uh, scaling it down and then holding, uh, pressing Shift and X. And then it's going to scale it down on both the vert uh, axes except the X axis, right? So uh, it sort of scales towards the 3D cursor, but it scales on the same width on the X axis. And then I just fill this in, and I did the same thing from the side. I placed my 3D cursor in the front and I extruded this vertex again and I scale it to zero this time on the Z and the X axis and again it lines up pretty perfectly with the front vertex. So I can just fill this stuff in and now the other part that I want to do here is this sort of little, uh, it's like a little piece to this uh, panel in the front. It's like about another maybe 10-15 centimeters to the front. So I place my 3D cursor up here and I select the edge at the bottom and I extrude it and I scale it uh, outwards again on the uh, Y and the Z axis. Again, this is going to keep the same width on the x-axis, but it's going to get some length in the proper direction to the front, on the same slope and the same angle, so it fits perfectly with the rest of the tank. And then the next part is to make this little, uh, the, the back part of this panel here. And uh, I just extrude it to the back, and then I extrude the side of the, the panel. I bring it up, and then I just pull it back a little bit so it has the right angle. You can see that I fill it in. Well, I, I pull this vertex forward a little bit, and I align it with the blueprint. And then it looks pretty much the same uh, as, as the real thing. And uh, at this point it becomes flat on the side. It's no longer angled to the side. And then you can just take, uh, you make sure you have this lined up perfectly. You can take this edge on top here. And uh, you can just extrude it backwards and follow the rest of the tank with it. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, I extrude this back. And uh, I place my 3D cursor at this angle here. I take the edge, extrude it, and scale it to zero uh, on the Y axis. I do the same thing at the top of the back here uh, on the Y and the Z axis and again once again on the Y axis here uh, I extrude it and I scale it to zero so it lines up with the back of the tank. So I noticed at some point that this panel on the side it has a flat bottom so uh, the part that you can't see which is under the, the, 
the top, which is like behind these sort of panels on the side. It's perfectly flat, which means that we can just take everything here and uh, we can extrude it downwards and then we scale the whole thing to zero on the Z axis and then we just pull it down so it has some thickness and now it's pretty much, uh, it has the perfect shape that we need and then also one more detail that I had to make sure I take care of is uh, the alignment with the back so I just zoomed in very closely to this angle here and I made sure that it lines up perfectly with the back of the tank now I couldn't really use my 3D cursor for that so I just did it manually by hand, I just zoomed in and I, I made sure that it lines up with the edge in the back here. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the boring stuff here a little bit again. And uh, after this, I'm gonna separate a vertex here from the side, and uh, I'm gonna make it into a new object, which I'm gonna to move to the side of the tank. Uh, and once again, I'm gonna use a 3D cursor over there just so I can line it up perfectly and scale it to zero on the x-axis with the 3D cursor. And I'm gonna use this vertex afterwards to uh, create this sort of side panel uh, of armor which is covering the tracks. This is called the the skirt of the tank, I believe, or the skirt armor, or something like that, anyway. And uh, then I'm just going to do the same thing I did before at the beginning of the video, where uh, I was sort of outlining the blueprint, uh, and uh, I'm just going to extrude this vertex and make the outline of one of the panels, and then I'm just going to fill in the face and add some thickness afterwards. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I noticed that I had a bit of a problem here, because I realized that this armor panel should probably be lined up with the front of the tank, so it should go, uh, it should go as far out to the front as the far front of the tank, right? And mine was a little bit pulled uh, backwards, so uh, I had to fix this up. But uh, I think it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's not really a very noticeable detail. It just, uh, for me, it works a little bit better, you know, with uh, with uh, mud guards above the tracks. Then I just went ahead and put on a, a matte cap real quick because it's much easier to see what I'm working with. And it also doesn't hurt the eyes as much. I went with the red one because that's my favorite one to work with. And uh, you can see I added some thickness to this armor panel, but I'm going to delete that now because uh, I'm going to add the thickness later so all the panels have equal thickness. So uh, uh, I, have to, I have to do it all together at the same time. And uh, the next part I'm going to be messing with here is... Uh, uh, the rest of the armor panels, and in particular, I have to be careful about these gaps between the panels you can see here, right? And uh, the problem is that they all have to be uh, exactly equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vertex from the end of the uh, skirt panel here, and I'm going to duplicate it and move it to the side so it's sort of, uh, so I make the gap. But like I said, first I delete the thickness, because I'm going to add that after. And I take this edge, uh, I duplicate it with Shift D, and I just move it over a little bit, so that uh, I, this is going to be the start of the next panel, right? And now, before I make the next panel, I'm going to move this into place, and I'm going to take these two edges alone, and I'm sort of going to duplicate this gap between them, right? So I don't take any actual material, I just take the edges, and I duplicate them over to the other end, so that I have a... Uh, this is where the other space is going to be. And then, like you see here, I can just sort of fill in the, uh, the space between the two edges, and that's going to be my new panel. And now, the gap between the panels is exactly the same every time. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up the spaces between the edges here just to make the rest of the panels. And uh, I'm also going to make sure that I have a sort of outline for this uh, part of the panel in the back, which is above the sprocket. And uh, I won't be uh, doing all the bevels yet. I'm just going to make a rough outline for it just so I know that it's there. So uh, I have a rough idea of what the shape should be like. And uh, then, of course, uh, it's also important to make sure the normals are correct. You can see that over here all the normals aren't the same because you can see there's a bit of a color difference between them when they should be the exact same color. And uh, if we turn on the the normals, the normal lines, you can see that they're not pointing the same way. So I just select everything and with Shift N, I just uh, make sure that they're all facing the same way. And then I, I select everything, I extrude it and add some thickness to the armor panels. And then uh, I think it's also important to keep this as a separate object. Now when, when I'm making a model, I like to keep uh, as many items as I can as separate objects because it's just uh, much easier to work with and if I want to use a modifier on one of the objects I don't have to use it on all the other objects so uh, I separate the object and I just parent it to the rest of the tank right so uh, it's just uh, much more organized and easy to work with and then I also have to take care of this little part where the skirt sort of goes down you can see there's a little bit of an angle 
So I made a loop cut right in the middle of one of the panels and I just moved the, uh, the edge on the right a little bit lower. And I placed my 3D cursor on that edge uh, and uh, I just scaled the rest of the skirts to zero uh, with that 3D cursor at that point, right? So you can see it just, uh, all of it goes down at this point a little bit, right? And now the panels are pretty much uh, as they should be. And I also just have to line it up with uh, with this little angle here just because this is where uh, it should, the skirts are going down. So I placed my 3D cursor there and scaled the loop cut to zero on the Y axis uh, with the 3D cursor there. And now the main part of the tank, the main outline of the tank, I would say is more or less done of the hull of the tank, right? So now I can start messing with some of the details. And uh, I decided that the first thing I'm going to do uh, are going to be some of the details uh, between the armor panels. Like you can see the sort of connectors uh, between uh, the skirt, right? And I think uh, in real life, if when you have this tank, uh, you can sort of open these panels like doors, like windows, let's say, and then you can uh, get a better look at the tracks. For example, if you have to fix the tracks, you can just open one of these panels, like a door, and then you can uh, you can work on the tracks. But I'm just gonna make some loop cuts like this, uh, uh, according to the blueprint, right? And then I'm gonna add another uh, loop cut on the side, so that I have some uh, rectangles and squares uh, like I should for the little dents in the in the armor panels, right? So I select those faces where I need the gap, I delete the faces, and then I just fill in uh, the gaps between the edges. And now I figured the best way uh, for me to do this next is if I delete all the faces here, just so I can get rid of the extra edges. See, there's a lot of edges on this face. I'm gonna delete those two faces, and I'm gonna fill it with another face, which is gonna be a very uh, nasty end gone. And uh, some people might be a little bit bothered by that, but I think it's really not a problem because it's a completely flat face, so it shouldn't affect the shading uh, or anything like that. So uh, I just remove all those extra edges. You can dissolve them too. And it depends on what you prefer doing. I remove those extra edges and I just fill in uh, the whole face like that, right? And then if I select the edges on the corners, it's much easier to work with bevels, right? It's not going to create a mess with the rest of my edges in between. So then I just selected each of the edges here uh, in between and uh, I wanted to add some bevels here. And uh, I had to make sure that the bevels are uh, the same on each angle, right? I don't want one bevel which is bigger than the other here. They should be consistent. So I think I used a value about uh, 0.03 or something like that, 0 0.003 maybe. Uh, yeah, so, I j so just so I can use the same number on the other bevels as well. And uh, I made about, what's that, two or three edges in the bevel. And as you can see now, that looks pretty nice. I think uh, it's accurate enough for my model. And I also added some bevels to the sides, uh, to the ends of the, of the little, uh, I would say, the dents, right? So uh, I, I undid the bevels from before, and I uh, selected the edges again just so they're consistent on every edge, so it's the same exact bevel. And then I just repeated the same thing uh, for each of the panels. Okay, I added some loop cuts again, and then I extruded the pieces out of the loop cuts so that they would sort of fit in with the other panels, right? This would be the other piece. Not the dent, but the sort of piece that sticks out and connects with the dented part from before. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same process, so I'm just gonna speed that up a little bit again. And now I can start working with the mudguard in the front. So this is the part above the tracks. In the front, you can see it's kind of rounded. And uh, it's an interesting shape. It's not very difficult to make, but uh, it adds a lot to the tank. So I wanted to make it uh, pretty detailed, which meant that I had to use some booleans as well to make those little dents. You can see it has like some lines which are which are kind of cut into the mud guard. But otherwise, it just uh, I took a, a, a sort of edge and I extruded it out, and then I added some bevels and some solidify modifiers, and it was pretty straightforward. You can see here I'm trying to mess around with it, but I realize it's better if I start off by just using a flat plane, right? Which is what I do right here. And uh, I move it to uh, the place where I think the bevel uh, should be placed, right? So I just extrude the edge out. And then uh, I extrude it downwards, right, to the end of the mud guard. And you can see I just make a nice sharp angle. But uh, I don't go all the way because you can see that the little part that's sticking out, that part is rubber. So I'm going to make that a separate object. It's not the same as, uh, as the metal piece at first. You can see there's a different color too. So I'm going to make the first part first and then the second part afterwards and uh, yeah I basically just have this one edge and then I add a pretty big bevel to it just to make it sort of round and uh, the bevel has I don't know plenty of edges just so it looks smooth enough right at this point I also added an empty here uh, at the end of my edge 
just in case I wanted to go afterwards and find uh, where the edge was supposed to be located afterwards, right? Because once I add the bevel, I can't really undo it, okay? So I can use the uh, empty as a reference, and I, if I place my 3D cursor in the middle of the empty object, then I know that this is where the, uh, this is sort of the origin of the bevel, right? So if I scale the bevel towards that point, it's going to go back, it's going to become sharper. And uh, there was just a sort of backup plan, but I didn't end up doing that, I just left it as it was, so I didn't really need uh, the empty in the end. And now the next part was I thought was pretty interesting because uh, I needed to use a solidify modifier. Uh, but the thing was that this shape is not really just uh, a curved plane which has a thickness to it, okay? Because it has a, a sort of interesting shape. You can see it's kind of rounded at the end, right? It's what I would achieve if I added a solidify modifier, but I selected only rims so that I don't have the filling, right? And then I delete the face at the end and at the beginning so that... Uh, it has the right shape, and you're going to see that in a second here, okay? First, I have to find the right uh, thickness for the solidify modifier, and I figured I'll, I'll just leave it at this, and then I'll manually um, change it so that it goes below the skirt afterwards. And then I check the only uh, rim setting, right? And you can see now it's not really filled. And then once I apply the solidify modifier, which I do right now, I can just delete the end faces, and now I have the right shape, which I need. Now the problem is it now it doesn't really have any thickness, but I'll do that after I add some bevels. Okay, you can see that now it has the same shape as it should, as it does in the reference photos. It just needs a little bit more thickness, which we're going to add afterwards, right? So now uh, the next step is going to be adding some bevels at the ends. But before I do that, I also place a 3D cursor at the end, uh, and then I use it as reference to scale down the rims. So I pull them down a little bit just so they go under the skirt. You can see that there shouldn't be a, a gap between the mudguard and the skirt. And then once again you can see there is my second solidify modifier. I made sure that there's even thickness. At this point I realized that I went too far ahead and I added my solidify modifiers before my bevels. So now I undid some steps and then I add my my bevels uh, which are, they don't have to be very large, just uh, just uh, enough edges so that it looks pretty smooth and uh, once I add the bevel I have to make sure that the bevel is wide enough just so the solidify modifier doesn't result in clipping okay because otherwise uh, if it's too sharp and you add too much thickness there's gonna be a lot of clipping between the edges on the inside uh, of the shape on the inside of the solidify modifier so now you can see I have a rounder edge and uh, now I can add my solidify modifiers and now it looks pretty much the way it should now if you look at the mudguard, somewhere in the middle on the top part, there's that sort of edge which is cut into the mudguard. And it's a pretty long and thin shape. And uh, I'm going to do this uh, using some booleans. Now if I wanted to hand model this, it would give me some problems because it's very hard to add uh, some bevels in that case to make it look nice on the inside. So I think the easiest way is to just use a boolean modifier. Now what I do here is I create a circle with about, what's that, 10 vertices. And then I turn the circle to the side by 90 degrees. And then I take each half of the circle and I just stretch it out to the side. And I stretch it out so that it has the same width as the cut, which is going to be uh, done according to the blueprint. Well, you can't really see it very well on the blueprint, but uh, you can see that it's it's almost to the end of the mud guard on each side. So I stretch, uh, stretch this out and I make sure that it's even on both sides. And then uh, I make sure that it has it's not too large. I have to rescale it down a little bit and then also increase the size by just a bit on the, on the sides again just just to make it a little bit longer just so I have the right shape and now uh, I'll have to be careful with this so it doesn't go too far and, and so there's also no overlapping with the edges because if any of the edges overlap with the edge in the middle of the mud guard here then uh, the boolean is gonna have some trouble but anyway just make it in the middle of the edge so there's no there's no uh, colliding vertices and now I can just take this circle and I can fill it in uh, I can pull it down a little bit and I extrude it up Okay, and this is going to be what I'm going to use to cut the hole, right? And when I use booleans, I like to rename the object just so I can recognize it in the boolean modifier when I'm looking for it in the menu of like a hundred different items. Uh, it's pretty hard to find uh, the right object, usually the name like cube 0 0.57. And in that case, it's a little bit tricky to find it, but I just name it to something like cut. And then I add my boolean modifier and uh, I select the object that I want. And also you can see that it's a pretty sharp cut, so uh, I need to add some uh, some bevels at the bottom, which is what I do right now. Uh, just a little bit of bevels is going to be enough for this. 
just so it looks uh, smooth enough okay something like that should be okay and uh, then uh, if I add my uh, if I apply my boolean modifier uh, you make sure that it's, it's it's above the other things when you apply it then uh, you can see that I have the perfect cut right there and now with an edge put modifier this is gonna create some pretty nice shading as well and now if we move over to the back of the tank uh, we're gonna be working with uh, these exhaust systems that you can see in the back you can see they're kind of like uh, holes cut into the tank it's like a big uh, big gap in the body of the tank which is covered by this grid now I made one attempt at making this grid at first which didn't turn out very successful using array modifiers so uh, I'm gonna skip that in, in this video I'm gonna move that to the next one but uh, uh, for now I'm just gonna add some loop cuts which I'm gonna move to the side uh, of this sort of armor panel which is on the side of the tank and just to, this is just gonna be the wall between uh, the exhaust and the edge of the tank right so I want two loop cuts which are approximately the same distance away from uh, from the other edges of the object here so I'm just gonna, gonna bring it pretty close there and uh, on the other side as well and then if I take this face I can just extrude it and I can pull it down and this is gonna be uh, this this is gonna make this sort of hole for the exhaust so uh, I can extrude this I just pull it down a bit uh, I have to make sure it doesn't go too far down so it doesn't uh, clip through the bottom of the armor panel and I think something like this should be okay you can see here this is the grid cover that I was talking about I didn't really like how it turned out so I'm not gonna show this in this video so I'm gonna take all the edges around I'm gonna select uh, the loop well it's not really a loop but it's, it's the edges surrounding the cover for the exhaust and uh, I'm gonna extrude all those edges up a little bit I also separated them to a new object and I separated them up just so uh, uh, just so it can, they can make a bit of a thicker cover for the exhaust and uh, well, that's not really a thing in the real picture you can see there but I thought it was a pretty cool uh, pretty cool detail I just felt like that's how I should make it so that's what I did and then I just extrude the edges of the side uh, so it has some thickness as well now when you're doing something like this you have to be sure to uh, delete the faces at the bottom which are not visible and it's not really uh, super necessary but I feel like it's just uh, unnecessary uh, edges and vertices and faces uh, which you can really get rid of to reduce your poly count to reduce your, the complexity of your object and uh, I think it's, uh, I don't really feel comfortable having a bunch of edges or faces in places where you can't really see them, where they're clipping with something else. So I just delete the ones underneath uh, when they're not visible. And uh, then I just fill in the gaps between the edges here. I also delete that face at the bottom. You can see uh, that's the one I don't really need it. It doesn't make any difference at all. And there's a few more faces like that around the frame here. And uh, then I can just fill in the rest of the edges here and uh, delete that face there. And I fill in the rest of the edges for the frame and then it has some nice thickness to it. And I'm going to select all these objects and join them with the rest of the tank. Now uh, I'm still going to keep the uh, grid separate because uh, I, don't, I don't want that to be uh, together with the rest of my tank. Because if I, if I join them then it's going to be very difficult to select the grid alone if I ever want to remove it. And in this case that was a good thing because I did actually want to remove it afterwards. And if it, was, if it was all one object, and I would have to manually select all the vertices which belong to the grid alone and not uh, the surrounding uh, parts of the tank, then it would be very difficult to do that. So the grid is separate, but I just joined the rest because I don't really need to keep it uh, a separate object. I'm not going to do anything else with it. So now I just take another face from the edge of this frame. I duplicate it, and I bring it somewhere towards the middle. And this is going to be the separator thing that you can see uh, on the middle of this exhaust thing. You can see there's like a metal piece you know, almost in the middle of it. And uh, for that, I just took a face from the side, and I moved it to the middle, and I extruded it down to the bottom. Now, uh, I have to do some fixing at the bottom here, because you can see that there's a clipping. Uh, I, I, took, I extruded the things way too far down, so uh, they're clipping through the bottom of the tank. And that's not really something that I want, so I have to fix those manually here. And uh, let's just make sure they're just at the right height here. The angles don't really matter, because this is really not going to be visible at all. And uh, again, I can get rid of the excess faces here which I don't need and now I'm gonna add some loop cuts to the middle of this new separating piece of metal and uh, I'm gonna try to get them so, so they're somewhat the same shape uh, as the real thing in the picture there but uh, I didn't really nail them exactly because I, I, I couldn't figure out exactly what the shape was so uh, I figured there's something like this anyway and it doesn't really matter too much 
this is not a very visible part of the tank, so uh, as long as it's roughly the right shape, I think uh, I think it should be okay. And then I just have to adjust the height again, and uh, I figured I want them to stick out of the exhaust just a little bit like that, so I also have to fill in the faces and the sides, and uh, I'll do the same thing on the other end there. And uh, of course, the most important thing is always is adding some bevels. So I add some bevels just to make the edges a little bit more round, and uh, now we have the nice separator there. So let's delete these faces at the bottom again. And uh, now, as you can see, there's no clipping, there's nothing, everything looks pretty much the way it should. And uh, that's all we're going to be covering in this episode. Uh, we're going to continue on with the other details in the other episodes. So uh, thanks for sticking by, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.